Namaste. Way back in the ancient days, I guess it was the 60s or maybe the 70s, the FCC chairman at the time, I forget his name, I'll look it up, said that television has become a vast wasteland. Huh? <laughs> I mean, what would he do if he saw the internet now? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I think the same term is very much applicable to the Internet. When the Internet first started, of course, there were only geeks and nerds and engineers and people like that. In other words, intelligent people. And so they structured it in a very open way to give them maximum freedom because they were used to that from academic environments and so on. But what happened? Corporate America moved in and took over. And they've made a bunch of closed gardens, huh? walled gardens, they're called. And in these walled gardens, anybody and everybody can post stuff. I mean, they always could. But the corporates just made it so easy that there was no more barriers, no more friction. And literally anybody can post, even a dog. <laughs> so what do we get? A vast wasteland. I mean, yeah, you can set up your own little echo chamber where only posts you see are ones that agree with your points of view. You can do that, you know. But if you look at the larger picture of the Internet and what's available on it, even the major news sites are full of garbage. You know, misspelled words, incorrect syntax. Peacock is here. He's expecting his peanuts. Just a minute. I'm busy, okay? I'll be with you soon. <laughs> And here he comes up the steps. Good morning. And uh, there's just misspelled words, bad grammar, you know, wrong ideas, not just stupid ideas, wrong ideas. And of course, tons of misinformation, disinformation. Um, what do they call that? Psychops. Uh, where people are being influenced into buying into certain ideas that are actually just ignorant, dumb, stupid. Why is this? And what is it doing to our society? Well, if you study intelligence, one of the main, I don't want to say measures of intelligence, but it's a proxy for intelligence, is IQ, intellectual quotient. And IQ, although its primary purpose is to measure verbal and analytical skills, is a good proxy for general intelligence because a person's verbal and intelligence, uh, sorry, verbal and analytical intelligence will predict very accurately how good they are at learning. So someone with a really high IQ can learn very quickly and efficiently. But someone with a lower IQ, you know, takes them a lot longer. Now, if you look at the way IQ is represented, it's represented as what's called a Gaussian distribution. Don't get scared of the big words now. It just means that the average score, if you take all of the, re, the re, uh, respondents to this quiz, this test, and you graph them, you find that the greatest number of people or the greatest number of test results cluster around an average score or a median score. And that's what is defined as IQ 100. IQ 100 is the average intelligence. 
Now, that means half of the population has an IQ of less than 100, and half of the population has an IQ of greater than 100. So, what happens when you democratize the media? When you make the media, whether it be television or radio or the internet or whatever, when you make it completely open so that anybody can post anything pretty much that they want, what happens is the meme IQ of the whole medium is dragged down to average or below. See? Because previously, like back in the ancient days of newspapers, huh, which were very good for rolling up and beating off dinosaurs, you know? <laughs> but newspapers had an editorial board Every writer had their own personal editor, and those editors all together formed a body called a board that determined editorial policy for a newspaper. So each newspaper had its own voice, and so there was a certain amount of echo chamber effect, but you could pretty much uh, rely on them for quality reporting. That's not true anymore. The only standard of quality and reporting now is how many views you get. And because, as we said, the internet allows anybody on board, that means that the number of views is going to tend towards the average intelligent person, the 100 IQ person. And what does that mean? It means the whole thing gets dragged down from the standard of being uh, gate-kept or gated by editors to being gated by popularity. What's the difference? Editors are expected to be literate people of high intelligence. IQ north of 120. See, so when the content is gated by intelligent, literate, educated people, it has a higher quality than the average. But now, since the only criteria, practically speaking, is uh, views, the quality has become degraded to appeal to the average intelligence or below because that's where the views are. That's where you get your most ad impressions. And that's what's driving the whole internet. So because the content of the internet isn't curated anymore, isn't gated by editors and editorial policy, so much of it is simply garbage by unintelligent people. And the intelligent articles and posts get lost in the noise. For example, if you're watching this channel, you're probably a spiritually minded person. And if you look on the internet, so little content is spiritually oriented and the bulk of the, of the content that is spiritually oriented is like fanatical sectarian religion or bland new age concoctions that have no basis in reality. Huh? And, and this makes it impossible or, or nearly impossible to find quality content. You know, that's why one of the reasons why this channel has so few views. You know, that that you'd have to really dig to find it. You, you're not going to find it just by casually surfing YouTube. You're going to have to do a search. You're going to have to look for it. So in the same way, take any topic these days and the less intelligent posts are in the tremendous majority. 
And I can remember, like when I was young, that the quality of writing in newspapers and so on was much higher than it is today on the news sites. The quality of reporting, especially investigative reporting, was much higher and had much more credibility as a result. But today, anybody can concoct any kind of a, of a conspiracy theory, whether they investigate anything or not, right? And some idiot will buy it. And it gets views. So it sells ads. So the, the platforms promote it. And the whole intelligence of the whole society is driven down towards the mean. 100 IQ. Now, if you... If you meet a person who is of 100 IQ, they're not exactly stupid, but you wouldn't call them smart either, especially verbally. It's more difficult for them to tell what's truth and separate it from what's bullshit than a highly educated person or highly literate person because that person has formed a higher standard of what's truth or what is allowed as being intelligent content. So people of less intelligence, let's say 100 IQ and below, are the majority. Now, if you meet a person of 80 IQ, you would say that they're mentally or intellectually challenged. They have a hard time learning things, and they have a really hard time distinguishing between truth and falsehood. Especially today, when there's so much junk, so much garbage and nonsense and idiotic conspiracy theories around. So... That's the problem. The whole society is being dumbed down. They're making cuts to education. I was lucky. I got a pretty good education right next to New York City. And we had a, a good school with some good teachers, a lot of PhDs. But now you look at schools, teachers are just losers. They're people who can't get jobs anywhere else. A lot of them have sociopathic tendencies and they're taking it out on the kids. So <laughs> it's hard to respect school anymore because school has become a hideout for the people who can't get any work elsewhere. You know, it's the bottom 10% of college graduates. I'm not kidding. And the, and the school administrators are the ones who score even lower on the college tests. So it's a ship of fools. So people's education quality has gone down. That means their uh, literate and analytical skills have gone down, right? Which means their IQ has gone down. And it's true, they have had to adjust the IQ weighting scale at least twice that I know of in the last 20 years, to account for the fact that people are less literate now than they were 20, 30 years ago. So all this means, <laughs> this, this is a society on the verge of collapse because it's being overwhelmed by disinformation and misinformation. The difference be between them is that disinformation is, in, is uh, intentional and misinformation is just dumb. <laughs> and this, was, this is what happens at the end of historical cycles when civilizations break down. And it's funny, you know, I'm studying Ray Dalio, who is a very good analyst of geopolitics and macroeconomics. And he says that a, a, a cultural cycle, a civilizational cycle, lasts about 250 years. And so America now, is 250 years after its creation, is due for a crisis 
and either it will renew itself or it will collapse. And just coincidentally, huh, quote unquote, that happens to be the orbital period of Pluto. See, Vedic, strict Vedic astrologers don't recognize the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. But the enlightened Western Vedic astrologers do. And I have found them to be very valuable in making predictions. So what's happening now is that Pluto is coming back into the position that it occupied at the birth of the American Republic about 250 years ago. 1776. So in 2021, 2022, through 2027, this Pluto will come back to the same position it was in when America was founded. And so what's going to happen is either America, well, certainly America is going to go through a great crisis. It's already entered that crisis. And the internet and the level of intelligence expressed on the internet is just one of many, many, many symptoms of this crisis. And so either it's going to pass through the crisis and re get reborn into a vastly new form, or it's going to collapse. And of course, the collapse won't happen immediately. It takes 50 to 100 years for a great civilization to fully collapse. But in any case, it's due for a huge transformation. There's no more business as usual. Those days are gone. The real question is, especially for outside of America, outside of the US, is how are we going to manage without America's stabilizing influence on the world scene? Because they have to turn inward and reinvent themselves or die. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.